we've talked about many different ways to get a line. And we always get the whole line. Sometimes, though, we only really want a little piece of a line, a line segment. So how can we do that? Well, remember, uh, we have a line here. R of t is the point on the line plus t times v. If we only want a piece of that line, let's say we want to start at when time is equal to a and end at when time is equal to b. If we just want that piece of the line, well, then all we really have to do is restrict t. Okay? So this is an example of a line segment. So, <clears throat> of course, you know, the way we got this is by already starting with the line and saying we want to start at this time and end at this time. But what if I just said I want a line segment between two given points? So let's say I want, let's use another color here, let's, let's do this one as an example. Let's say I want a line segment starting at some point A. And you know what, let's even give this some numbers so we can combine the example with it uh, with some actual numbers. Let's pick one, two, three. Right? And ending at another point B. And uh, let's make this a little interesting. Minus one, three, and oh, four. Four should be good. So the general idea for how we do these things is to, well, you know, normally when we start something, we think of that as being time zero, is, is the initial part. And then, well, since we're mathematicians and we don't like big numbers, we'll say we end at time one. So if you think of that as, you know, distance, depending on whether t is seconds, minutes, hours, We've either taken a really short time to get between these two points or a really long time, depending on you know, however you want to view it. So how do we do that? So what we're basically saying is we want r of 0 to be a, this 1, 2, 3. And we want r of 1 to be b, which is minus 1, three, four. Well, the easiest way to combine these together into one whole thing is to say, well, when t is zero, I want something that's equal to one. And that, of course, is one minus t. Right? If I plug in t equals zero to that, I get one. And now I can put a here. Right? And then when t is one, I want this thing to be 0, which it is. That's why I've cleverly chosen that here. And I want the other thing to be 1. So of course, that's this. Okay. So the important thing to notice here is when t is 0, this survives and this goes away. Whereas when t is 1, this one goes away and this one survives. Okay. And then we restrict here that t only goes from 0 to 1. So then we'll get the line segment starting here at A, ending here at B, and doing nothing else. Right? So let's actually plug in our numbers now to get the solution to this example. Right? So we have 1 minus t times 1, 2, 3, plus t times minus 1, 3, And then now we can just multiply this out and combine them, if you like, into, so we have 1 minus t minus another t, so 1 minus 2t. We have 2 minus 2t plus 3t, so that will be 2 plus t. And then 3 minus 3t plus 4t, so that will be 3 plus t. Right? And that is, and we'll just tack this on here again at the end, 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1. Let's put another 
R of t here, just to remind ourselves that the answer with the actual numbers in it is given by this. Right? It's very important to include these bounds on t, otherwise we don't know when to start and don't know when to end. 